subject had. <laughs> <laughs> Ten days after Dad's passing, my stepbrother Richard and I took on the challenge of cleaning out our family camper. My cousin Henry also helped out significantly. Over the years, the camper slowly went out of commission and transitioned to a glorified storage facility. In other words, it became a very expensive extension of our garage. <laughs> The problem with going through the belongings of someone so dearly and so recently departed is that even the most trivial of items seem unbearable to part with. You essentially wander around aimlessly moving items from old boxes to new boxes without purging much of anything. I found an old DWP bill with dad's doodle of, of Godzilla on the envelope. <laughs> I'm keeping that. <laughs> A chip plastic commemorative cup from Margaritaville tumbles out of an overhead cupboard. I mean, you can't really throw something like that away, can you? <laughs> it's safe to assume without Richard and Henry's help, nothing would have gotten done and we probably would be looking into public storage options. This isn't to say we didn't come across some true gems. One box uncovered countless family photos of, of nearly every major family trip we had taken. Another box revealed Dad's troop badges from his time as a Boy Scout, around the piano over there. They even found Mealyborns. Mealyborns is an obscure French card game that I'm pretty sure Dad made up the rules to after we lost the English version of the instructions. <laughs> Each nook and cranny of the campers seemed to have a little piece of Dad in it. I finally uncovered the jackpot of all jackpots. I blew the dust off of a blue plastic bin, I flipped back the lid, and I found over 50 illegal fireworks. <laughs> Bottle rockets. <laughs> they weren't the best of Dad's stash, we probably lit off the big guns about 10 years ago, but we aren't talking about sparklers either. These go up in the air, and they explode. I've tried to ration them the past three weeks, sparing them for special occasions, but most of the time I just light them off on nights that I miss Dad most. It was a way to feel close to dad with him, without him actually being there. This here is the last of the bottle rockets. This is the last of dad's stash. So in the memory of dad and in the presence of all who love him, I'm now gonna light off the last one right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember my first encounter with the bottle rockets, though. I was probably nine. It was after one of Dad and Maria's many trips to Mexico. Dad called me into the garage. Bucko, I want to show you something. Dad called me pretty much every variation of Buckaroo from the age five up to the final days he was in the hospital. It was kind of our thing. When I entered the garage, he was wearing safety goggles, and he had an extra pair of safety goggles for me in his hand. In his other hand were the fireworks and a five foot long, one inch diameter piece of aluminum tube that consisted of one open end and one closed end that came to a point, kind of like the stake of a beach umbrella. What are the safety goggles for, Dad? There are smart ways to do dumb things, son. <laughs> this is one of Dad's signature phrases. It's one of those little gems of wisdom that to the dismay and horror of my wife, I plan on passing on to our future children. <laughs> Let's go outside, Dad said. After a few trial runs and some instruction, Dad incorporated me into the action. Private Baker, assume position, stand by, fire in the hole. Dad would slip the lit bottle rocket in the tube, I'd kneel, mount the RPG on my shoulder, aim it right above the neighbor's tree line, sorry Dickie, and <laughs> I'd shot the missile from our cannon until it arced in the neighborhood sky and fizzled out into 20 dozen tiny sparkles. I have the best dad in the world. Back in the camper, I stumbled across another blue plastic bin, identical to the one that contained the fireworks, except this box was labeled Camp Stuff in Dad's iconic big black block letters. 
I blew off the dust, excitedly flipped back the lid and found bungee cords <laughs> and tie downs. Still a valuable find, however, they're admittedly less fun than illegal fireworks. I was almost ready to move on to the next box until I spotted between the bungee cords quite possibly the most ridiculous possession my dad owns. In fact, there are two of them. <laughs> Everyone in my family has memories of these ridiculous things. <laughs> <laughs> My aunt remembers when they were first purchased. <laughs> Apparently, it was on a trip the adults took to Santa Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Dad stepped into a gift store near the hotel on a beer run, and he saw the two Elvis wigs and bought them without a second's hesitation. <laughs> For the rest of the weekend, Dad, Dad walked around Santa Barbara in this stupid thing. <laughs> Let me clarify, it was not Halloween, no one else was in costume, Dad just thought it'd be a fun thing to buy. Dad was perfectly impulsive in this way. He always made laughing a priority. You might be wondering how the wigs accidentally ended up in the camp box, but if you know anything about Dad, you'll know that the camp box was their intended home. These, these wigs went with us everywhere. They were just as essential of an item as our gas lantern or our camp stove was. In fact, I remember one time we took our ATVs to Pismo Beach. We made it a tradition to do a sunset ride along the campground and down the coast before we made our nighttime campfire. On this particular night, Dad suggested we do our twilight run with a twist. Let's wear the Elvis wigs, Dad said. But Dad, how are we gonna wear our helmets with these things on? <laughs> Just don't pop any wheelies or anything. Mm. <laughs> but, Dad, you always said there are smart ways to do dumb things. <laughs> Dad was often more persuasive than he was wise. We rode through the campground and gave thumbs up to all our fellow campers. Some gave a thumbs up back. Some even gave standing ovations. And some just watched probably in bewilderment, as the father and son Elvis rode their quads down a picturesque sunset beach. <laughs> I have the best dad in the world. When I opened the coat closet of our camper, I came across one of the biggest treasures of my childhood. <laughs> this is our family football. It's a bit flat now, but Dad taught me how to catch with this ball. Not very well. Dad taught me how to throw with this ball. Even worse. Um, but more than anything, Dad taught me to love this game. Football was our thing. It connected us. I even remember our first trip to a Raider game. Well, we have made many trips to Oakland Coliseum, our very tr first game was in Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. Our, our family friend Adolfo gave us the tickets and they were perfect. Lower level, 50 yard line, perfect. The only slight dilemma is that the tickets only came with one seat. Two tickets, one seat. Let me clarify. One of Adolfo's tickets was a handicapped ticket for a wheelchair. The other had an assigned seat number. So we did what was most logical, we borrowed a wheelchair. <laughs> I have to sit in a wheelchair? Are you sure this is okay? It's fine, just when we're in the stadium, we'll be in the handicap section, stay in your seat and be respectful of others. Other than that, act normal. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. And it was fun. I didn't have to sit in the wheelchair while tailgating in the parking lot. In fact, the wheelchair kind of doubled as a makeshift portable ice chest. We loaded it up with a bunch of beer and a few Dr. Peppers for me, and we strolled through a Qualcomm Stadium parking lot. I remember one of the parking lot security guards pointed to our wheelchair cooler with a quizzical look on his face, sort of like, what's the deal here? Dad didn't take a quarter of a second to respond. The beers are for us, the wheelchair is for Doug Flutie. <laughs> Doug Flutie was the starting quarterback for the San Diego Chargers. 
I was 11 at the time. The security guard literally doubled over and laughed. The actual game was very close. In fact, it was really tough to sit in the wheelchair the whole time, but I kept up the act. I don't remember much of the game, but I do remember in the middle of the fourth quarter, the Raiders were down by one touchdown and they were charging down the field. Rich Gannon sat back in shotgun formation. The ball was hiked. The linebacker blitzes up the middle, literally has Gannon in the, in the grasp. Gannon shakes and scrambles, best scramble in the NFL, rolls the outside and hits Tim Brown on the most ridiculous seam route I've seen in my 11 year old life. Touchdown. I go ballistic. I jump out of the wheelchair, I'm running up and down the aisle, giving my handicapped peers high fives. I'm going crazy. I run to dad, dad wraps his arms around me in a tight embrace and screams, he can walk! <laughs> I have the best dad in the world. <laughs> You'll notice that I've been using the present tense. I have the best dad. Let me explain. Shortly after dad passed, I received a card in the mail from an extended family member. It read, there's nothing that can compare to the loss of your father. But as long as our loved ones live in our hearts and in our memories, there's a part of them that never leaves us. I believe that this is true. Because as I share these stories with you, I can see dad smile and I can hear dad's laughter. And even though I'm gonna run out of bottle rockets, I'm never gonna run out of memories with dad. Told myself I wouldn't cry with Elvis with <laughs> <laughs> If you're here today, you likely have your own memories with dad. Can I ask a favor of you? Share them. Share them with me. Share them with my stepmom. Share them with my sister. Share them with my aunt. But don't stop there. Share them with your family. Share them with your friends. Share them with a stranger. God knows this world could use a lot more Rick Baker in it. So share your memories and remind others to make laughing and loving a priority in their life. Thank you.